Hello, in this module, we will begin analysis of open steady systems. We already have all the ingredients. We have the governing equations. We have already covered the material models. And now we're going to put that together. So let's start, start with an animation of an open steady system. So notice the system is open. The flow can go in or out through this inlet and exit. So we have flow going in, flow coming out. So therefore, this is an open system. Now, it's a steady state when at a given point in, within the system, the state doesn't change with time. As you can see, uh, if you run the animation, you'll see at a given point, things are not changing. If you recall, steady system means because at each point, the properties are not changing. Uh, if you want to find the total energy E, which is sum of all the pixels, all the local systems, you find energy in each local pixels, add them up, you find mass, energy, or entropy, they will remain constant with time. So therefore, let's, okay, let's play the animation a little bit, then you can see the governing equation. So as you can see, we start with most general mass, energy, and entropy equation. And because mass, energy, and entropy remains constant in a steady state, notice that the diagram, the the, the local system, the color doesn't change with time. So this is the first simplification. As a matter of fact, that is all. After switching side, what we get is that something that is very intuitive. What this says that the mass equation says that all the mass that comes in equals the mass that goes out. What comes in goes out. Look, this is nothing but the energy that comes in. The first one is energy carried by mass, transported by mass that is coming in. And Q dot is, by wind hip, Q dot is a positive quantity. So Q dot is what is coming. It's algebraic, but in this sense, we are, your Q dot is coming in. So this is the energy in. And the external work, which is made of, made, made of shaft, electrical, and boundary work, they all go out. This is the natural sign of work. By, by, by wind hip convention, we will assume that work going out is positive and heat coming in positive. So the energy that comes in equals energy that goes out. And look at the entropy equation. The entropy that comes in through the inlet and through with heat plus the entropy that is generated because of thermodynamic friction must be equal to the entropy that is going out. So that's our balance equations. Okay, so if uh, a further simplification is obtained if we assume it's a single flow. So what I mean by that, that only one inlet, sorry, let's go back to that part of the animation. So if there's only one inlet and one exit, we don't need the summation sign, then the equation looks even simpler. So one way to understand them is through a flow diagram. So here's an energy flow diagram. Notice that this, this arrow here represents energy that comes in, transported by mass. This is what is heat coming into your system. And together, they go out either as, as some of the external work that is going out of the system and the energy that is transported out by the, by the flow. The, similarly, the entropy diagram also, it diagrammatically shows you the balance of entropy. Entropy can be carried by the fluid that is coming in. This is the entropy transported by mass into the system. This is the entropy carried by heat into the system. And of course, friction can always generate entropy. And the sum of all that must be the entropy that is coming out of the system. Uh, we'll come back to these animations later. But this is a simple analysis, a straight duct. And we are electrically heating some, some air flowing through the duct, uh, just like a hair dryer. So how do you analyze such a system? So this is obviously an open system, and let's assume it's at steady state. So to analyze this system, notice, first of all, the, one of the things that has to be understood that in such a flow, the pressure 
does not increase. Even if you heat the system, the pressure doesn't increase. That's because whenever there's a flow, the friction is going to oppose the flow. And, and, the, the, and so therefore, the pressure actually must drop to overcome friction. So in, in any pipe flow, you've got to remember that it is Newton's law that will show you that pressure must drop along a flow. You must have seen it along a pipe or tube running sprinklers, for instance. So the farther downstream you go, the pressure will go down. So this is a commonsensical thing. So even if I heat the system, don't let it fool you. A Newton's law is not invalid if you heat a system, it's still valid. So in other words, take it for granted that pressure generally drops, no matter what in a pipe flow. But the pressure drop is so little compared to the total pressure that it's generally neglected. So we'll assume in such flows, pressure remains constant. In that case, the energy equation, <coughs> anyway, the energy equation becomes very simple. Notice the energy equation, be, the, okay, first, first the mass equation. Uh, in this case of the hair dryer, mass that goes in equals mass that comes out. And if we write the m dot equals rho a v, this must be a familiar equation. We have been talking about that for a long time. If we substitute that, the equation simplifies and density is one over specific volume. So notice the mass equation itself sometimes can give you an unknown that you are looking for between the inlet and exit. Energy equation says that, again, the energy that comes in through mass plus heat equals energy that goes out through mass plus external work. If the Ke and Pe can be neglected, recall that J is nothing but H plus Ke plus Pe. So if Pe and Ke can be neglected, then J can be simplified into H. So that's a very big simplification. In other words, in this equation, it is very simple equation, and if there is no heat transfer, suppose there is only work transfer, then final equation become quite simple. So how much work do you need? In this case, to heat up the hair dryer, the electrical work, W dot in, equals M dot H E minus H I. Notice that if we are using a perfect gas model, then this will become equals if you go back to the perfect gas formula, Cp, T exit minus T inlet. So in other words, if I just know the temperature, the inlet and exit, and air, the Cp for air can be picked up from any perfect gas table, and therefore we can figure out how much work is going in. Notice that W dot in is a positive quantity, whereas W dot external is algebraic. That's why we're substituting minus W dot in. Likewise, the entropy equation, m dot si, if heat transfer is zero, then this is the left-hand side, the entropy that is coming in plus the entropy that is generated, that must be equal to the entropy that is going out. In general, the entropy generated, which is the amount of friction in the system, which quantifies the total friction in the system, is given by a simple expression on the right-hand side. So in other words, if we know how to find entropy at inlet and exit, we can figure out the entropy generation. Again, if we use the perfect gas model, you know that S E minus S I can be written as, so this formula will become M dot, and it is C P L N T T E by T I minus R L N PE over PI. Sorry, the writing is terrible. But notice that if there is no pressure drop, this is one, pressure at the inlet and exit are equal. So therefore, this term drops out, log of one is zero. So this become a very simple expression, m dot CP m dot cp ln te over ti. So notice just by knowing the temperature, the inlet and exit, not only can we find the work that we need, but we can also find the amount of entropy that is generated by this system or this system's universe. Okay, let's go look at another example. Uh,
for instance this is a long duct and again this is a, is a single flow system uh, you can apply again the mass equation will be simply m dot in and m dot i must be equal the flow is going through a long duct the energy equation as we have done before becomes m dot this is the energy that is carried by the flow in and there is no heat transfer and there is no work transfer also it's just a duct with a flow so therefore the j i and j e must be equal or if we neglect k e then it becomes k and p then enthalpies become equal so notice that we haven't assumed the pressure is equal here even without that we we get enthalpies are equal so that's a very significant conclusion that we, we, we obtain. It's an isenthalpic flow. Likewise, you can show that the entropy generation, just like in case of the hair dryer we showed, can be given like this. And if there's a pressure drop, of course, if, a, if this is a gas, then we can use the formula for finding that. By the way, this is irrespective of this could be a liquid flowing, gas flowing, or whatever, because we haven't used any model so far. But if it's a gas, we can use the perfect gas model to find entropy and enthalpy. So if, if this is a perfect gas model, in other words, if air is flowing, then we can say temperature cannot change. Can you see that? Because enthalpy is a function of temperature alone. If it is a... And, and then to find the entropy, generation will be m dot cp ln te by ti minus r ln pe over pi so notice if if the pressure drops pe is less than pi so ln of pe over pi would be this is a, this is less than one would be negative so therefore this will contribute to entropy generation temperature rise and pressure drop together will constitute the total entropy generation in this long duct. Well, we could go on uh, and, and, and keep on building, but I think uh, solving a problem with numbers would be more interesting. So I'll stop here, solve the problem, and, and, and continue with more interesting open steady systems.